With the Pixel Fold coming just around the corner, I thought it might be interesting to take my SIM card out of my Z Fold 4 and place it back into my Pixel 7 Pro and daily drive that for a few days and see what I thought. See how that device was holding up and what had changed, how my thoughts had evolved over the half a year or so it's been since that device first came out. Of course, a lot of things about the Pixel 7 Pro should translate pretty close to one to one over to the Pixel Fold. So the timing felt right to do this as well. So in this video, that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about what it's like to use the Pixel 7 Pro a full half a year, six months after release. So the first thing I wanna talk about here is just the hardware itself. How is it holding up after about half of a year. So the first thing here is the screen. I don't have any significant scratches at all. And of course, this thing does not have a screen protector on. I almost never use screen protectors and it's holding up just fine, even there on the edges. Now it has been in a case of some sort for the most part. So that is definitely going to be a factor in that. Now you've also heard reports of the back glass shattering. I have not had that problem either, but I don't live in an area where the temperature swings too crazy one way or the other, which seems to be the culprit where this metal material actually expands and contracts and puts pressure on that glass. So I have not had any issues with that either. All in all, this thing looks pretty much the same as it did when I first bought it. Granted, it's not been used super heavily, just kind of off and on here and there, taken out when I'm going to places, I'm going to be taking lots of pictures and things like that. But it seems to be holding up reasonably well no real complaints there other than the fact that it is still just incredibly slippery if you do look up here at the camera visor i think that you can probably see lots of little micro scratches in that material and that's a little bit on the ugly side but not a huge concern not like a deal breaker for me overall the hardware for me has been absolutely solid now speaking in terms of personal preference though I don't think this is a design that has grown on me a whole heck of a lot. I don't love the look of the visor with this particular material, the white and then the silver. It's just a weird look to me. I think it would look better if this were black or something like that. I think that going to this color was a bit of a mistake. And the cameras in general, the fact that it's like one oval and then another circle just kind of looks weird to me as well. I know on the Pixel 8 they're combining it into one circle and maybe addressing some of that, but overall the appearance to me is just a little bit strange, right? It's just a big white block with a shiny silver bar across the back. It's not something that I absolutely love. It's not the best looking phone I own by any stretch. Now what about the software? For me, the Google Pixel experience remains one of my favorite versions of Android. I just love so many of their little touches where the lock screen kind of slides out like that. I just really, really enjoy it. I think it looks really, really good. I love the animations. I just love how smooth it is. I'm actually using the stock launcher on this thing, which is a rare, uh, rare occurrence for me to do. And it's just lightning fast, guys. Like there's never been a time in the last three or four days using this thing that I've been like, man, I just wish it had like a more powerful processor or anything like that to drive the software. It's just super fast. It's really, really solid. Opening apps is quick especially if it's an application that you've had open already. The speed with which this thing just flies around the operating system is really, really impressive. Let's turn down the volume here to make sure that we're not making any noise. It doesn't hesitate, right? It just jumps around from app to app really, really nicely. And again, these animations also look really nice and smooth. I've even kind of grown to enjoy this now playing widget up here. The fact that it's got the little squiggles whenever it's playing is an interesting touch. It really kind of differentiates itself from other Android devices. Overall, the Pixel experience is just really, really solid. Even compared to like a Samsung device that's had years and years to build their One UI experience, the Pixel experience does seem to have a similarly cohesive, fully thought out vibe going on. And it's something that you're either, you're either gonna like or you're gonna dislike. Some people are gonna prefer One UI. Some people are gonna prefer the Pixel experience. I'm someone that likes them both actually quite a bit. 
but I just feel like the Pixel experience is just more fun, if that makes any sense. Maybe more expressive is the right way to describe it. Again, looking at how the lock screen works and everything, all these little animations. I don't know, it's hard to describe but I really like it. The software is, as you would expect, it's rock solid. Now, while I have found myself enjoying the Pixel Launcher more than I thought I would, there are a couple of things that I wish you could do. There are some things that I think are a little bit strange. I wish we had more customization of this launcher. Of course, you can jump into your home settings here and you can do some interesting things here, but I mean, really there's not a whole lot that can be done. Personally, I would get rid of this thing up here altogether if I could and you just can't. Another interesting thing here, if you jump into wallpaper and style, you can change the app grid. But again, not to the degree that I would like to. I would love to have this thing be five by five, but the dock down here be able to hold six apps. Maybe change the dock and the rest of the layout. These are things you also cannot do, and I just wish that we had more flexibility in that way. Nothing that's a huge deal, but I just wish they let us do a little bit more. And then you have some of the cool stuff like now playing where it's gonna recognize music in the background automatically. You have call screening, which is really nice as well. I've even found that on the launcher, the apps that it thinks I might be using next seems to be pretty weirdly accurate. A minute ago, I talked about the processor. I talked about how it feels plenty fast to me. Well, let's talk about that efficiency for a minute. You can see here, I'm at two hours and 10 minutes of screen time with 69% of my battery remaining. So that puts me on pace for somewhere in the range of eight hours of screen on time. I see people sometimes talk about the Pixel 7 Pro not having great battery life. For me, that has never been a problem. Six to eight hours of battery life is more than enough for me. I can't imagine needing any more than that. This thing has been a battery champ for me. Now, one place I should mention that I have had a little bit of an annoyance is with the automatic or adaptive brightness. It seems like you just jumped up there. It seems like it's always a touch dimmer than I want it to be. And I keep adjusting it, trying to get it into a place where I like it. You can see here, I'm pretty much maxed out. There is a light source obviously here, but it just seems like the screen is not quite as bright as I want it to be. Maybe I'm a bit spoiled from using the S23 Ultra, but it's definitely something that I've noticed. I continually want to increase the brightness on the display by a little bit. That being said, I can usually get it where I want it, where I feel okay with everything, but it just has required that adjustment far more than I would have anticipated and far more than I'm used to. I am gonna go ahead and put my 2D Merge case back on that I've been using for the last little bit just because I genuinely don't like handling this thing without a case on because it is so very, very slippery. Let's do a quick uh, speaker test here because this was one of those things that when I went from my Fold 4 or from my S23 Ultra to most other phones, I was usually very, very disappointed. But with the Pixel 7 Pro, it's really not too big of a problem. So let's start this song over. Let's crank up the volume to maximum. I do have the, I think it's called Adaptive Sound or something like that. Let's go into sound and vibration. Adaptive sound, yes, this is turned on. It's supposed to improve the quality and to my ear, I believe that it absolutely does. But let's do a quick test here. And then let's slide the Z Fold 4 in here and do a comparison to this. This thing has incredibly good speakers. It's a much larger device, so that does help it. And honestly, it's kind of surprising because the Pixel 7 Pro speakers get considerably louder than the Z Fold 4. I do think that the Z Fold 4 has a bit more bass and an overall, maybe you could call it a slightly better sound, but the Pixel is really close. And, and like I said, it gets substantially louder. These things speakers are no joke. Of course, you do have sound coming out of an amplified earpiece as well as down below, so it is true stereo sound. So let's take a second now and talk about one of the biggest selling features for most people uh, for the Pixel devices, and that is the camera setup. The cameras in the Pixel 7, in this case the 7 Pro, are very, very good. There's a lot of great things about them. 
And I don't know any better way to demonstrate this, but to just show you some photos. So that's what we're going to do. This first shot here is taken with the primary camera. And I believe I was using portrait mode here. And overall, this thing does just a really good job. This looks quite natural. No portrait mode is completely perfect, but this does a pretty good job of creating a believable shallow depth of field. Details, good colors are not like Samsung where they're punched up to the point that they're unrealistic. This does look quite natural. Here's a shot of a squirrel in my front yard where I know I was zoomed in past 5X. This might have been 10X that I was zoomed in here using, of course, you know, 5X optical zoom in the digital from there. This thing does a pretty darn good job of capturing some good detail and allowing me to get this shot. S23 Ultra might have done a bit better just simply because it does have an optical 10x zoom, but it's really not going to do that much better than this. And because the moment those words left my mouth, I knew that I would upset people and they would challenge me on this. Here is the Pixel 7 Pro at 10x, so we're 5x optical and the rest is digital. And here is the S23 Ultra doing the same thing. Yes, the S23 Ultra is perhaps brighter and slightly sharper, but there's also quite a bit more grain. You could also say this might be slightly overexposed. Which one do you prefer? It's, like I said, might be a lot closer than you were thinking, right? I'm not going to spend too much longer on the camera because you know the story here, right? The ultra wide looks pretty good. It's one of the better ultra wide cameras on any phone. None of them look incredible compared to their primary sensor, but this thing does a pretty good job. Standard zoom, 2x digital, again, looking really, really sharp and solid. And then going to the 5x optical zoom, which looks absolutely fantastic. The detail, the colors, everything is in a really good place here. The only place where I can kind of nitpick the Pixel 7's camera is that sometimes the shots come out looking a little bit over sharpened for me. It almost still feels like they're trying to apply too many fixes to their camera more than they need to be. They're no longer using that crummy old 12 megapixel sensor. Maybe it's time to dial some of that sharpening stuff back a little bit. It's not a huge problem, and a lot of the time, the shots look fantastic, but in some instances, it may look slightly over sharp, and I think digital zoom is one of those places where that occurs the most for me. Now, this shot here might not look overly impressive to you at first blush, but I want you to understand something besides the fact that Rose is a lunatic and often brings whole chunks of plants inside the house. This was taken in relatively low light, and she was not being all that still, and yet it was able to keep this relatively in focus. If this were my S23 Ultra, this would have been absolutely blurred mess. The Pixel 7 Pro does a great job of capturing moving objects, even in poor conditions. And that's pretty much what you should expect out of this phone. The Pixel 7 is one of the, if not the best, point and shoot cameras on the market. You can pretty much assume when you click on that shutter, you're probably gonna get a good shot, even if it's in low light or really low light where night sight takes over and things look pretty good that way as well. And video has also been improved. I've honestly even been pretty impressed with the video performance. The stabilization has always been good, but the video quality with the Pixel 7 Pro is finally beginning to reach a place where it can compete with phones like Samsung and maybe even Apple a little bit. I still think that Samsung has a bit of a lead here, but it's not like it's so far apart that if you're focused solely on video performance, that you have no choice but to use that Samsung phone. Google is actually getting quite good at this now. There you go, guys. I have honestly really, really enjoyed my time with the Pixel 7 Pro, and I think I'm going to keep driving it for a while longer. I switch phones a lot. I do this very, very frequently. But I find myself, as I'm using my Pixel 7 Pro, getting more and more excited for the Pixel Fold. I said this a long time ago, that if Google gave me the Pixel 7 Pro, but made it a bit shorter and had it open up into a landscape tablet, they literally just did that. Make this thing into a foldable that I would buy it day one. Well, I hadn't used the Pixel Fold in a long time, so that feeling maybe started to wane a little bit. The price tag of the Pixel Fold started to upset me a little bit. But now as I go back to this device, I am reminding myself why I felt that way to begin with, and I am definitely feeling that way again. Using this device is doing nothing but making me more and more excited for the Pixel Fold. It is still an absolutely rock-solid device that I can wholeheartedly recommend to anybody.
It has personality. It has some awesome features, an incredible camera, rock solid battery. There's really not a whole lot to dislike about this device. So there you go, guys. Those are my thoughts on using the Pixel 7 Pro a full half a year after launch. If you want more content just like this, subscribe before you go. I will see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.